Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Man's Reviews. Today I'm looking at the brand new Garmin XT2 motorcycle GPS. I am super, super excited to uh, get this reviewed and get it on my bike and give it a test. So what I'm going to do, I, I, I'm not really doing an unboxing. I've already taken it out of the box. Uh, let's turn it on. I've also got my Garmin XT over here, which is the previous version. I think they still sell it, though. Uh, probably a little cheaper. Uh, for some reason, it says my battery's low. Not sure why, because I did have it plugged into my USB-C port for quite a long time. Also had it on my motorcycle, but it does show a low battery. This video is sponsored by Cruise Man's Garage Honda Goldwing Maintenance Video Series. So there's something to do with this not charging on the USB-C. I'm not sure what that's all about. Anyway, there you can kind of see the different interface uh, between the XT and the XT2. There is a slight difference in the interface. Uh, you've just got more options over here on the side. Uh, the screen, of course, is bigger. It's a 6-inch screen compared to a 5.5-inch screen. And it is supposed to be a lot brighter, but once I get it on the bike, I'll give that a test. We'll get out there on the road, do a little route. Uh, I will tell you that uh, Garmin has changed the way they do routing online as far as they don't really recommend you use Basecamp with this. It no longer connects and you can't transfer files. It's a little bit clunky in my opinion. Uh, I'll talk more about that later on. Now, in the box, you do get quite a bit of stuff. Let me pull this out here, and we'll take a look in here. Uh, you get the mounting cradle with a ram ball mount, uh, which is what I've already got installed on my bike. Now, the good news is, as far as I know, you do not have to mount this. If you have the XT installed and this cradle installed on your bike, this will work with the XT2. So I don't think I have to take everything off and reinstall this. I think it, it will work with the XT cradle. That's my understanding. Uh, you get a USB to USB-C cable for, I guess, for updates. I, it, doesn't, it doesn't apparently charge it because my battery is still low. And I had it plugged into my USB-C for at least four hours. Uh, you get the ram ball mount for your uh, various mounting situations, either round handlebars or I believe you can also use this with the Goldwing and BMW, the hand control mounts. Very nice. Uh, we have a couple of contacts here. Not sure what that's for. Uh, we have another little ram ball extender. And we have a fused connector, so if you are wiring this up to your battery, you would want to use this on the positive side. There's also a little bit of documentation, not very much. You probably are going to want to download the manual online, and then they give you some uh, cable ties. Okay, so that's everything in the box. I say let's go put this on my Goldwing, and let's go take a ride. I've already created a route using, I used Basecamp. They don't want you to use Basecamp anymore, but I did, and I'll explain on the ride why I did that. So let's get to the garage. Today I'm doing a couple of things. Not only am I going for just a little ride around the local area, Okay, so uh, as I started to say, I'm doing a couple of things. Not only am I just going for a nice little ride, but I'm also testing out this Garmin XT2. Thank you, Garmin, for sending me this to review. Uh, Garmin's not sponsoring this video. They didn't pay me to make the video, but they did send me this XT2 to test. As you know, uh, I previously had the Garmin XT which was the forerunner to this. I think they may even call it the X-T1 now, I'm not sure. But you can see, uh, as we talked about in, my, in the studio, uh, they have changed the interface. I actually like and prefer this new interface to the previous interface on the X-T. And let's see, I created a route for my ride today with a few waypoints. We're going to see how it performs. And let's just see. I think if I go to Explore, okay, this is the ride right here. Route avoidances have been changed. Let's say yes. And it's calculating the route right now. 
I will say I think the screen might be a little bit more uh, usable with gloves the other XT was very nice too and okay I don't know what insert means I'm just gonna hit okay maybe insert means I didn't want to create a stop so I'll just hit I don't know how to make it just go maybe it's asking me if I want to insert the avoidance changes so I, I, we didn't get this on the XT this is new I'll just say insert route don't know I don't know I'm not used to this this is new I'll hit the little disk button see what happens okay now it says go so I guess my route is okay um, closest entry point is what I want and now it's calculating the route I'll have to read up and see what that insert means and we will start the route okay so let's go I'm, I am getting messages through the helmet I was able to pair this to my Cine 50S as a GPS so I'm getting a secondary announcements through my helmet which is very nice I like that so I've pulled over here in Salina Texas which is kind of where I start the interesting part of the ride and what I'm gonna do is I can't hear the instructions on this Garmin uh, it's very faint so I'm gonna see if I can't adjust the volume I think I do that here let's see where's the volume it's gonna take me a while uh, apparently you says to use the Bluetooth headset to adjust the volume but I've got it turned up as high as I can go and I can barely hear it seems like I've had this issue before and I'm not exactly sure how you remedy it but I can just barely hear the instructions coming through through my headset and I've got my volume on my headset turned up as far as it'll go so it's not the headset I don't think let's go and I'll talk to you a little more about the Garmin on the way now I can barely hear the announcements coming through the helmet uh, but of course I can see this big uh, six inch screen on this Garmin which helps and so far it's uh, working very good I did the same ride on the Indian Pursuit uh, using its built-in navigation and it actually experienced a few hiccups uh, a few times it routed me the wrong way but the, the Garmin is doing uh, it's dead on it's taking me exactly where I told it to and I'm using the same route I actually I actually created the route originally on the Indian website and imported it into Basecamp and then converted it over to use on this uh, on this Garmin at one point during this ride I decided to see what would happen if I just went completely off route and sometimes you do this when you're riding. You see something interesting. You see a different road you want to take. So let's see how the X-T2 handles it if you go off route. To complete this task. Let's go down here and see what's down here and see what the Garmin does. Because it looks kind of interesting down here. This road might end up being a little rougher than I was anticipating. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know where I am now. <laughs> I'm way off course now. For about the next 10 or 15 minutes, I rode down a series of these really, really small country roads. And while the roads themselves were a little bit sketchy, it was really fun, lots of interesting scenery, and it just made for a better ride. And I never felt like I was going to get lost because I knew the Garmin would get me back to where I needed to be. Because right now, the Garmin is trying to tell me to turn around and go back to get on my route. I just thought I would do a little uh, random discovering. I have no idea what road this is. So that little side adventure took about 10 or 12 minutes and now the Garmin did a good job of getting me right back on my original course. That's one thing I love about traveling with a GPS like Garmin is very rarely will it leave you stranded. I mean, I, I, I don't think it's ever left me stranded, actually. Took me down a dirt road one time I wasn't planning on. At this point in the ride, I, for some reason, thought the GPS had led me astray and I thought I was way off route. Turns out I wasn't. I just didn't trust the Garmin, and I should have. Uh, I think I missed my turn. I was supposed to go right back there on 75. So we'll uh, turn around and... I don't know, it's saying to go straight. I was actually on the correct route all the time. I just wouldn't pay attention to the GPS. Let's see what happens when I pull in this parking lot. Let's see what Garmin does. I'm wondering if it won't tell me to go back the other way and cross the highway. So this is actually a good test. I think I took a wrong turn. Let's see how the Garmin handles it. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I'm supposed to go straight on highway. I think we're on highway five or maybe we're still on 455. I'm not sure. So let's go back to that intersection and see where it has me go. Cause right now it is telling me to make a U-turn. Yeah, it says to go left. So I guess I was going the right way. It wants me to go left. You know, I've been using a Garmin GPS for many years, and I've learned over time that there are just times you need to trust the Garmin. So on this test ride of the Garmin XT2, I'm really throwing everything at this machine that I can think of. I actually went in while I'm riding and I deleted one of my waypoints because I was trying to speed things up a little bit, get back home, and I deleted the wrong waypoint. You know, I think I might have missed my stop at Bucky's. I told it to get rid of a waypoint and I might have gotten rid of the wrong waypoint. I was testing the feature for getting rid of a waypoint. And I think I accidentally got rid of the wrong one. This will give me an opportunity to pull over and just see how easy it is for this to take me back to Bucky's. So let's just see if we can add Bucky's to our route. And I'm just going to do a search here. And you can see Bucky's shows up. All I had to type in was BUC. And it should find the closest one. Now, hopefully this one is in their database. It is 0.7 miles, so it's very close. And I'm going to say go, and it's going to ask me, do I want to create a new route, or do I want to add this as a stop? And I'm going to add this as a stop. I don't want to give up my route. Okay, so we're good to go. So it's basically going to take us up the road a little bit and have us go back on the service road north to get to Bucky's rather than make a U-turn here. Just probably safer. So that's what I love about the Garmin. If you decide you want to make a stop or go somewhere in between, it will ask you if you want to add that to your existing route and it will just reshape your route to include that stop. It's a very nice feature, very elegant. And uh, I do believe this screen is very glove friendly. The rest of this ride was pretty uneventful thanks to the Garmin X-T2. Now, I actually 
did make it to Bucky's and I have a motor vlog if you want to see it, it I'll put a link in the upper corner of this video and uh, the Garmin routed me back to Bucky's and then all the way back home let's head back to the studio and I'm going to give you some final thoughts on my first impressions of the Garmin Zumo X-T2 hey well that was a really great little ride kind of hot but now I'm back in the studio it's been a couple of days I've had a chance to collect my thoughts and I'm going to tell you some of my let me turn this on some of my final impressions of the Garmin Zumo X-T2 now this is final first impressions this is part one I'm actually going to do a couple more videos on this X-T2 I decided about halfway into this that there's just too much to cover in one video. I didn't want it to be a 45 minute long video. And so I'm only going to really be talking about the unit itself, the screen display, the maps, how it, how it interacts with you as a rider, and how it compares to the Zumo XT or what we now refer to as the XT1. So we're going to call this the X-T1. Generally, I am extremely impressed with it. The things that I have issues with have nothing to do with this physical hardware unit itself. It has to do with the mapping software, which I have not yet figured out. I'm still working on that and I'm going to cover that in another video. Why would I buy this over the XT? I think you can still purchase the XT1. I think it's about $100 cheaper than the XT2. Now, after having used this for a couple of weeks, let me first tell you the history. You'll notice in the video, my first part of the video, I talked about how I had this plugged into a USB port for a few hours and it just didn't seem to charge the battery. Actually, that was a different unit. I, the Garmin sent me a second unit. There was apparently something wrong with the first unit they sent me and it would not hold a charge. And I couldn't charge the battery. It wouldn't charge in the cradle and it wouldn't charge uh, from USB. Once I got this unit in and I've been using it now for a couple of weeks, no issues with charging. It charges from the USB port just fine. It charges from the cradle just fine. Now, I have a Garmin X-T1 cradle that I was using with my X-T over here. And you can use the Garmin X-T2 onto the Garmin X-T1 cradle. So if you already own a Garmin X-T and you choose to upgrade to the Garmin X-T2, no problem. You just snap off your Garmin X-T, your Zumo X-T, snap on the X-T2, you're good to go. Now, the reverse is not true. If you have the new cradle, this is the cradle for the X-T2, and it is a little different. It actually has some different contacts on it, uh, that, or a contact, I should say, that the X-T1 cradle did not have. All I know is it's not backward compatible. So you cannot use the X-T2 cradle with the older Garmin X-T, but you can use the X-T2 with the X-T1 cradle, which is good news for me. The second thing is you'll immediately notice a difference in the interface. Now, the reason I've got this plugged in is because when I came into the studio this morning, it uh, was the XT was not charged. It had lost all of its charge. So I actually have it plugged in right now to my Fantic uh, Evo 300 charge station. And that brings me to one of the main reasons, and I know it sounds silly, one of the main reasons I would personally either purchase the XT2 over the XT or I would upgrade to the XT2. Because on the X-T2, they have very wisely, fortunately, they have upgraded the charging port to USB-C. The X-T has the old-style USB, I don't know, I don't even know what it's called, 
it's not micro USB. I don't know what you even call this. It's like the very first version from 10 years ago when USB first came out. I had to go dig in my studio closet or my uh, office closet to find a cable. I didn't even have a cable because I don't have any other devices that use these old style USB connectors anymore. Uh, I am now charging or using this to power the XT1 so I can do this demonstration. But just having that USB-C connector to charge this might be reason enough for me to spend the extra $100. I know that sounds crazy. Okay, now you'll notice a difference in the interface. Can you tell a difference? That's 40% on the XT2, and that's 40% on the XT1. And you can see this XT2 has a brighter screen. Now, that's a horrible demonstration. I apologize. But I'm trying to illustrate they really have made a much brighter screen. As far as tactile response to gloves, I can't really tell a difference. I think both screens are about the same. They both do a very good job of working with gloves. The map itself is pretty similar. We're going to view the map here. We're going to view the map over here. Uh, they're very, very similar as far as the uh, display and what you see on the screen. I didn't really notice a huge difference, if any. And if it is, it's so subtle, I don't, you know, it just doesn't pop out at me right off the top of my head. In my video, in the writing portion of my video with the X-T2, I mentioned I had trouble hearing through the headset. And I think that's because you have to adjust the volume level before you connect a headset to it, I believe. I have gone in now and I have adjusted the volume up here. Master volume is at 100%, but you also have a mixer. And if you go into the mixer, you have to make sure my, ma my navigation volume was at about 40%. So I went ahead and upped that to 100%. And in future tests, I will let you know if that solved my issue. I think it will. Uh, I have media turned all the way down because I do not use this to play music on. I don't. I, you can put music files on here and play music through the Garmin. I don't do that. So if you do that, you would want to turn that volume up. The next big improvement, and another reason I would buy the X-T2 over the X-T1, is the way that you install and access the SD card or the micro SD card. On the X-T1, it's behind this little rubber flap over here, and it's in kind of a weird little cage that you have to flip up to get access to. And honestly, it's a little clunky. It's just, it's just uh, not elegant. On the X-T2, however, they've uh, relocated it to the bottom of the unit right next to the USB-C port, and it's very easy. It works like you would expect a SD card slot to work. You basically, kind of like a GoPro, you just punch it in and it sticks and you punch it again and it pops out. Very nice design. Very easy to use. The number one reason I would probably buy the X-T2 over the X-T1, I'll show you right now. And that is the keyboard. The keyboard on the X-T1 is split. You don't get to see all of the letters on the keyboard at the same time. So if I wanted to go to Einstein's Einstein Brothers Bagel, I could go E. Oh, where's the I? Oh, okay, I have to go over to another screen to get to the I. Uh, and then N, and then where's the S? Oh, I have to go back to hit the S. T, and then I can see Einstein Brothers, and it works basically the same way at that point. And I can find whichever Einstein Brothers I want to go to, and it will route me there or add it to my route. On the X-T2, if I go to search, oh, looky here. I've got the whole keyboard right there on one screen. I don't have to keep switching back and forth. That alone, I think, is worth $100.
Now, you might ask, why didn't they just make the letters smaller on the X-T1 and put them all on the same screen? Well, probably because they had to have these a certain size so that you could use them with gloves. So, but because you've got an extra half an inch of screen space, you got a six inch screen compared to a five and a half inch screen over here. That additional real estate was enough for them to put the entire keyboard on this screen. And I'm telling you, it makes a huge difference because you're always looking, you're always using this search feature. And one of the greatest things about the Garmin system is you can search based on address, you can search based on the name of a place. Uh, it, it just is very, very elegant. As you see, as you type, it's got that type ahead feature so that as, as I type in E-I-N-S-T, it goes ahead and pulls up different items that begin with those letters. And then I just hit Einstein Brothers. That makes it very easy as you're either if you're riding or if you've pulled off on the side of the road. So you don't have to sit there and enter the entire name. You can just enter the first few letters. And it's just very, very elegant. I love Garmin's interface. I think they have the best interface of any GPS I've tried, and I've tried quite a few. So let's go back to the home page. And if you want to execute a route that's in the system, let's assume that you've already got your route loaded. You either created it on here, or you imported it via a GPX file or some other method. How do you get to it? Well, on the XT1, you would have to go to Apps, and then Trip Planner, and then Saved Trips, and then here it shows your routes. You have to hit like three different buttons to get to it. It's a little, and it's a little confusing. On the X-T2, you simply go to Explore. So if you hit on this little Play button and go down to Routes, there's all my routes. So it's very quick. Just hit it, and it remembers where you were. So if you go to explore the next time, it just takes you right to your routes. Now, the way I would do on a multi-day trip, I might have one route for my first day ride from my home to the first hotel, let's say. Let's say I'm going to Memphis, Tennessee. I would have one route for that ride. And then on day two, I would have a second route to go from that hotel in Memphis to the hotel in Nashville or wherever I'm going from that point on. And I've done... Uh, long trips, two, three week trips, where I'll have 13 or 14 routes loaded, one for each day of the trip, and I've planned these out ahead of time. With this system, I can see everything that's all coming up ahead, any gas stations, any restaurants. It's very easy to modify a route right in the middle of a route. It's very easy to delete a waypoint if you need to delete a waypoint. So there's just a lot of advantages to this. Uh, I personally think it's worth the extra $100 over the XT. I also think it's a little expensive at $599, but if you do a lot of touring, multi-day trips, you're, gonna, you're just absolutely not going to want to live without this thing. And it's pretty easy to install. Now, I have an installation video that shows how I installed the XT on my Honda Goldwing. So if you have a Goldwing 2018 or greater, that video will show you exactly how to install this because they install identical. It's the same basic cradle design. Everything's the same. Now, if you're interested in the Garmin Zumo X-T2, I'm going to put links in the description of this video where you can, if you choose to, order this through my Amazon page, and it does help out this channel. It doesn't cost you any more to do it that way. It's the same price either way. Uh, and I do benefit. I do get a little bit of commission from Amazon on that. So if you choose to order it through my Amazon page, much appreciated. It does help support this channel and reviews like this. And I'll also put a link to the XT. If you choose to order the XT, I'll put that in there as well. So anyway, I want to thank you for joining me for this video. I know it was a long video. It's a lot of information to cover, and I've still got more to cover. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below. 
And don't forget, if you liked the video, make sure you click that like button, that little thumbs up down there, because that really helps the YouTube channel out. And, uh, you know, like I always say, ride often, but ride safe.